Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Spring to Life podcast. I'm Caitlin. I'm your host, and I'm also your hormone health coach, fertility awareness educator, and Pilates instructor. I created the Spring to Life method to help you embrace your natural cycle and live vibrantly. And this week on the podcast, we are doing things just a little bit differently. I want to share with you the first lesson from my cycle charting course, my cyclical living course that is housed in my membership on the Spring to Life website. My membership is called Get Synced and it helps you to make the shifts in your lifestyle and your approach to nutrition and your approach to movement and exercise that help align you with the hormonal fluctuations of your cycle so that you can just feel like your life is more in flow. This is not about, you know, making each day different according to your cycle, but it's about tuning into your energy and ultimately just really listening to your intuition, what your body is telling you. And a huge, huge component of that is learning about your hormonal fluctuations, learning about the intricacies of your menstrual cycle, taking a little bit of time to learn about that because that knowledge is going to have such a ripple effect across all other areas of your life. It really pays off when you just kind of let that absorb and sink in. So I want to share with you the first lesson from this course. It is called The Origins and the Dangers of Hormonal Birth Control. If you are currently taking hormonal birth control, I don't want this to be like a scare tactic for you, but I do think that it's just so important to see the whole picture, to have all of the facts on the table. And then like you will learn about in this episode, you will learn about informed consent. You can decide what is best for you at this point in your life, having all of the information and also knowing yourself. So please make sure to share this episode with anybody else in your life who is maybe affected by hormonal birth control, maybe struggling with the side effects of hormonal birth control, unsure of what the next steps are to take. I hope that this gets spread far and wide, and I'll see you on the other side. Welcome to the Origins and Dangers of Hormonal Birth Control, presented by the Spring to Life Method. For too long, women have been sold a lie that hormonal contraceptives are perfectly safe and work as a cure-all solution for ailments ranging from acne to heavy periods and even cancer prevention. This couldn't be further from the truth. My goal today in educating you on the origins and dangers of hormonal birth control is to empower you with feminine body independence by educating you on the science of your reproductive health and how it relates to your overall health based on sound physiological principles. Hi, I'm Caitlin. I'm your holistic hormone health coach, fertility awareness educator, and Pilates instructor. But it wasn't always this way. After struggling with chronic pain and frequent migraines following my ballet career, I became a certified Pilates instructor. But I was still frustrated with many ailments ranging from hormonal cystic acne and food sensitivities to low libido and recurring yeast infections. I then turned to holistic health coaching for a solution. And during my certification, I was mind blown at the concept of phases within the menstrual cycle, cycle syncing, and how detrimental birth control is to women's health. I decided to further my studies as a holistic hormone health coach and began the process of breaking up with hormonal birth control. Around this time, I started my brand, the Spring to Life Method, in order to guide women to embrace their natural cycles, naturally balance their hormones, and live cyclically with the power of Pilates, nutrition, and low-tox choices. Sensing a gap in my services, I studied the FEM Fertility Awareness Method in 2022 so I could provide my clients and community with a safe alternative to hormonal contraceptives, and here we are today. So let's talk about the truth behind the lie of the birth control pill. So this pill was first conceived as a means to combat overpopulation, not to provide women with sexual freedom. Gregory Pincus, the creator, is actually quoted as being against sexual freedom for men or women. And questionable tactics were used, including testing synthetic hormones on low-income patients without consent. So... 
between the years of 1951 and 1953 is when the idea of the first hormonal contraceptive pill was conceived. And they were working off the idea that elevated progesterone levels will block ovulation. By 1956, human trials were being performed in Puerto Rico. And in various trials, 22 to 50% of female participants dropped out because of the severe side effects. And they were doing these trials in Puerto Rico because there were much more lax regulations around uh, clinical trials and medical testing at that time. So the women did not like that they weren't getting their periods because in the initial version of the pill, it was all medicated all month long, all cycle long. So there was no quote unquote period included in the pill pack. So the women did not like that they didn't get their periods because they thought they were pregnant. And many of the physicians that were running these studies also reported many negative side effects. But the creator, Mr. Pincus, was gaslighting women from the start, claiming that the symptoms were quote unquote psychogenic, meaning that they only reported them because they expected them. So in 1957, the FDA approved the combined oral contraceptive pill with the added placebo pills to stimulate a withdrawal bleed, effectively tricking women into believing that they were still getting their periods while also avoiding pregnancy. In less than three years, two to three million U.S. women were on the pill, and that is an even greater number today, decades later. But by 1970, the Nelson Pill Senate hearings concerning the dangers of the pill, such as blood clots, stroke, depression, and heart attacks, led to mandatory inserts in those pill packs. And I'm sure you've seen on social media the funny videos that have been made poking fun at the extensive inserts that are in birth control pill packs in very fine print outlining all of the risks and side effects of these contraceptive pills. And there have been known links to nutrient deficiencies and mental health disorders for a very long time, but it is very few and far between that your doctor is going to ask you about your mental health or warn you about the known links between hormonal contraceptives and mood disorders before prescribing you the pill. I know that mine didn't, so maybe you can think back and remember if yours did or did not. Now, we can talk about the risks here of hormonal contraceptives, and this is not a fully extensive list. This is just a short list, but we have an increased risk for blood clots and heart attack. I actually have a firsthand story of someone that survived a near-death experience because of hormonal birth control on my Spring to Life podcast. That's episode 10. So if you are interested in hearing her story, I highly recommend going and taking a listen because it's very scary. Um, these really life-threatening potential side effects of this pill that seems so non-threatening because it's heralded with all of these benefits. So I highly recommend listening to episode 10 of the Spring to Life podcast. We also have an increased risk in breast, cervical, and liver cancers, retinal clots, loss of vision, increased blood pressure, irregular bleeding, cervical erosion, reduced bone mineral density, glucose intolerance, ovarian cysts, ectopic pregnancy, nausea and vomiting, nutrient deficiencies, mood changes and depression, weight gain, excess hair growth, headaches and migraines, low libido, and then difficulty achieving pregnancy once women are off the pill. The biggest risk with hormonal contraceptives is that they block ovulation. If you don't ovulate, you can't get pregnant. So it's doing the job, right? It's preventing pregnancy. You also can't have a real healthy period if you are not ovulating. Ovulation is not an isolated event in your body. It is connected to so many other processes that affect your overall well-being, like bone health, brain health, mental health, and more. And one of the biggest risks, and I talk about this a lot, is that young girls as young as 11 or 12 are being put on hormonal contraceptives to help them deal with irregular periods or heavy periods or acne or some of these other symptoms. And that is blocking the development of the menstrual cycle, just like our bodies, just like our brains. 
our menstrual cycle develops over time. So if a young girl is put on a hormonal contraceptive, effectively turning off that cycle, not allowing it to develop, it's not allowing it to work out those kinks, those irregularities, then that young girl is definitely going to experience even more issues down the road because the cycle was not allowed to develop natural interventions were not used in order to ameliorate those problems. And then we also have the risks of cervical erosion and reduced bone mineral density. So it's just not a great equation. <laughs> the problem though, is that we're told we don't have options. Many women have been led to believe that we only have two options, hormonal contraceptives like the pill or risking unwanted pregnancy. This also could not be further from the truth. In fact, when managing your fertility, you have three options. So first we have option one, shutting off healthy hormone production, also known as hormonal contraceptives like the pill, the patch, the ring, injections, some IUDs, emergency contraception, and the implanted rod. These devices provide a constant low-level dose of synthetic hormones like estrogen and progesterone, preventing the growth of an egg, ovulation, implantation, any of the normal processes of a regular menstrual cycle. So when we have insufficient estrogen, that is going to suppress growth of the endometrium, which is where, in theory, a fertilized embryo would be implanting. So if we don't have a healthy environment for a pregnancy to thrive, it's not going to happen. So insufficient estrogen suppresses growth of the endometrium, making it unsuitable for implantation. While synthetic progestins increase the thickness of cervical mucus, which inhibits movement of sperm into the uterus. So you're kind of blocking it from both sides with these combined pills. Option two is to block sperm's access to the egg. So these are things like condoms, diaphragms, cervical caps, sponges, vaginal spermicides. Honestly, a very effective, low cost, low risk in terms of side effect option. And then option three, the one that we are not told about is to monitor hormonal activity to avoid fertilization. Now, there are a couple different approaches to this, and some of them are more effective than others. And that is why I think that this kind of gets a bad rap. You have to be deliberate about the method that you choose. So you may have heard of the calendar or the rhythm method. This is honestly quite inaccurate and unreliable. Just going by a calendar of saying, oh, I've got four weeks in my cycle, so two weeks after my period, I'm ovulating, and then assuming then two weeks later, you're going to have your period is not the safest way to go, especially if you want to avoid pregnancy. Cycles fluctuate. You can't predict when ovulation is going to happen. It's something that you have to monitor and confirm after the fact. So just going by a calendar or a rhythm is not the safest way to go, especially if you want to avoid pregnancy. That's okay, though, because we have much better options. So getting a little bit more into our fertile biomarkers, the first one you might hear of tracking is BBT or basal body temperature. Basal body temperature is dependent on ovulation. So once your body has ovulated, once your uh, ovary has released an egg and ovulated, you're going to experience a slight temperature spike that is visible when you are tracking your basal body temperature from day to day. So this is a great way to confirm that ovulation has happened. However, you are getting no evidence of approaching ovulation. You're just kind of playing this wait and see game. And you can also get false elevations that occur from disturbances such as sleep, fever, alcohol consumption, stress. There are just a lot of things that can give you false elevations. And also, it's important to note that a temperature rise without the presence of fertile mucus does not indicate fertility, which brings us to the next biomarker that can be observed, cervical mucus. Cervical mucus is a direct reflection of hormonal fluctuations. So when you start to understand what the different types of cervical mucus are and you start to pay attention each day, you're able to tell what your hormones are doing. Rising estrogen indicates approaching ovulation, and that is able to be observed in your cervical mucus. 
And progesterone dominance indicates that ovulation has happened and it's also able to be observed in your cervical mucus. Third, uh, actually fourth here, we have LH monitoring. LH stands for luteinizing hormone. And LH surge indicates imminent ovulation. So we have these main hormones of estrogen and progesterone that are at play that influence our cervical mucus. The LH surge, this is actually a hormone that comes from the brain, and it just helps that process of ovulation along. So once you have observed a evidence of that LH surge, you can assume that ovulation is going to happen within 36 hours. So you can assume that you are in your fertile window. Since 1983, the World Health Organization research has found that the most accurate hormonal markers to predict fertility are urinary estrogen levels, which is something you would do at the doctor, and LH surge. So LH surge is very indicative of your fertility. I teach a combination of cervical mucus and LH monitoring to give you a really clear picture of your fertility. You can also combine the BBT tracking your temperature in to give you a third marker that is going to help to indicate when your fertile window is. And if this all sounds really compl complicated at the moment, it's really, it's really not that complicated. And when you go through the full cycle charting course with me in my membership, you're going to gain confidence month after month. And within three months, you will feel very confident with very little risk of side effects here. You will become an informed participant in your healthcare. And now you might be saying, well, there's all of these fertility apps. What about an app? The thing with apps are, like I said before, you cannot predict ovulation. And many of the apps out there are trying to predict ovulation for you. This is something that you can only observe and confirm after it has happened. So the same way the calendar or the rhythm method doesn't necessarily work, especially if you want to prevent pregnancy, relying solely on an app rather than in real time what you are observing and experiencing in your body could be a bit of a risk. It could be a big risk. So first tuning in and learning your fertile biomarkers and then secondarily using an app is a good way to go. Solely relying on the app is kind of playing with fire in terms of fertility awareness. Cycle charting and the fertility awareness method puts you in the driver's seat of your fertility. Combined estrogen, progesterone, progesterone, oral contraceptives have been classified as a group one carcinogen by the World Health Organization for a very long time. And the irony is just so striking because Birth control pills are often prescribed as cancer preventatives, but they're literally a cancer-causing agent. So I don't want you to be confused by this hormonal contraceptive. The birth control pill is carcinogenic. It is dangerous for our bodies. And like I said, since 1983, for also a very long time, the World Health Organization research has indicated that the most accurate hormonal markers to predict fertility are urinary estrogen levels and the LH surge. Now, you might be thinking there has to be a catch, right? Let's talk about efficacy rates of the different types of contraceptives. So first we have the pill. This is 92% effective with typical use, plus the risk of all of the side effects that we have been talking about up until this point. We have implants. These are 99.95% .95 effective. That's really effective, right? But we also have the risks of these horrible side effects. Then we have IUDs. These are 99.2% effective, plus the risk of side effects. So with these synthetic hormones, we have a fairly high efficacy rate, but we also have the risk of severe side effects. And you might be thinking, well, I don't really have any of these side effects. But if you are moody, if you're feeling burnt out, if you're having trouble digesting certain types of foods, if you get headaches pretty often, if you have heavy periods, if you have painful periods, if you're dealing with acne, there are so many symptoms that have been deemed quote unquote normal in our lives that really can be 
funneled down to the fact that we're taking hormonal contraceptives. You might be thinking, well, I had it worse when I was not taking this hormonal contraceptive. You were not going to the root of the problem. When we address the root, that is when you can really eliminate these symptoms and live in harmony with your cycle. So with cycle charting, we have a 92 to 98% effective rate with zero side effects. So not only do you have a very, very comparable, almost it's really better than the pill in terms of efficacy, you also have no risk of side effects. And what I love to note here is that all methods are 100% effective during infertile times of a woman's cycle. Only knowledge-based methods take cyclical fertility into account. Now let's break that down because I know it could be kind of a confusing turn of phrase there. All methods are 100% effective during infertile times of a woman's cycle. We were just talking about those fertile biomarkers in your fertile window. There are only about five to seven days within your cycle where you could actually get pregnant. The rest of the time, you cannot get pregnant. But if you're on the pill, you are taking a prescription medication every single day to prevent pregnancy. When you're not fertile, it's not possible to get pregnant. So knowledge-based methods like cycle charting take cyclical fertility into account. So you are using caution if you are trying to avoid pregnancy. You're using caution during your fertile window, and then you know what to look for to know that ovulation has occurred, that your fertile window has passed. You deserve feminine body independence. You deserve informed consent when it comes to your medical decisions. I want to help you take back your feminine body independence. You will fully understand your body and be able to recognize hormonal shifts and fluctuations, the vital signs of health, so that you can make informed decisions about your health care moving forward. You'll also be able to naturally control your fertility by gaining a comprehensive understanding of your female physiology, hormonal activity, cycle variations, and how to apply them to family planning, whether you want to get pregnant or not. You'll also learn to make informed choices when it comes to your personal health care, meaning a voluntary, well-considered decision that, is, that an individual makes on the basis of options, information, and understanding. Remember at the beginning when I asked you if your doctor had warned you about the possible risks and side effects when it comes to mental health and all of the other laundry list of symptoms that are possible when you're taking the pill, when they didn't tell you about that, you were not making a decision with informed consent. You were just accepting it. When you have all of the pieces of the puzzle, then you are able to make a decision with informed consent. So you could go through my entire cycle charting course, take a couple months to learn about your fertility, to learn about your hormonal fluctuations, and still decide that taking a hormonal contraceptive is right for you. And that's okay, but you will have made an informed decision about your fertility, and you will have understood the risks on both sides of the, the field, right? So what exactly is cycle charting? Cycle charting is the practice of regularly observing fertile biomarkers and recording them in a chart to observe patterns and gain a deeper understanding of hormonal fluctuations. Cycle charting is focused on observing and recognizing the signs of ovulation, otherwise known as the fertile window, based on fertile biomarkers in order to prevent or achieve pregnancy. Through my cycle charting course, you will learn to observe your body's fertile biomarkers to confidently identify your fertile window within three months. You won't spend 10 minutes before getting out of bed with a thermometer under your tongue, have to feel for your cervix every day, or feel anxiety around preventing pregnancy. Now, I want to share with you a couple testimonials of other women that have gone through this course. First, we have Lily. She says, I am so much more in tune with the nuances of my cycle and specifically what different types of discharge mean hormonally. I feel so much more in the driver's seat. I now have foods, etc., that Caitlin has given me that I am implementing to support my cycle where it's needed. Jamila says, I thought that my cycle was going to be irregular and miserable forever and that there was no cure. 
being able to track my cycle and know what I should be eating during which parts of my cycle and noticing the changes in my body has been life changing. And this client specifically was able to take her long, heavy, irregular cycles from 45 days down to 36 days, which is within the normal range and reduced and eliminated many of her PMS symptoms. Next, we have Merit. She says, I'm so grateful you taught me a cycle tracking method that works for me. After trying to track temperature every morning, Femme is much better for my schedule and fits into my routine. I love having the data to look back on to see how my cycle has improved or how it changes based on changes in my lifestyle or diet. She also said, I feel so much more empowered to live my daily life while respecting the phases of my cycle. It no longer feels like a burden to be on my period, but something I'm grateful that comes each month. And this really goes beyond fertility. Through this course, you will be able to regulate your menstrual cycle. You'll learn the characteristics of a healthy menstrual cycle and simple lifestyle and nutrition tips to help you have regular ovulatory pain-free menstrual cycles. You'll also deepen your self-compassion by going deep into your unique female biology. You will understand why you are not meant to feel and operate exactly the same way each and every day. By learning to ride the wave, so to speak, you will free yourself from internal and external criticism, shame, and societal expectations. And a personal note from me, I used to struggle greatly with body image and disordered eating patterns and really gaining some insight into my female biology helped me to heal that relationship with my body and with food in a long lasting way. I truly believe that this is something that all women should have the privilege of learning about so that they can have more self-compassion. You also connect to your feminine nature. While femininity looks and feels different for each and every one of us, learning what truly makes you tick as a woman and how to go with your flow opens you up to radically embrace what makes you, you. So who can cycle chart? While the content in this course will be educational no matter who you are, what phase of life you are in, to accurately begin tracking your cycle for contraception or conception, you must meet the following requirements have had at least one post-pill or hormonal contraceptive bleed, or have resumed your menstrual cycle following breastfeeding. Now, what if you are experiencing amenorrhea or PCOS, so like irregular cycles and ovulatory cycles? The principles of this course, along with the tools in the Food as Medicine cabinet, which are all housed within the membership, will be foundational in regulating your cycle. However, I suggest reaching out to schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation to assess your unique needs, individualize your protocol, and determine the need for further testing. I will say that I created the Spring to Life method to cover all the bases of a healthy lifestyle in order to support a healthy menstrual cycle. So we have a low impact exercise in the form of Pilates based, based workouts. We have a food as medicine cabinet along with a full recipe library with whole food nutrient dense recipes, and then lots of low tox alternatives to our typical home and personal care products, which also impact our hormonal profile. So it's important to take a whole body holistic approach. So I have to ask, are you ready to break up with hormonal birth control? If you are, all you have to do is go to springtolife.co and join Get Sync today to start your cycle charting education. And I can't wait to guide you on this life-changing path. Feminine body independence is ahead in three months, and I can't wait to see you there.